I think looking at this Michigan team, one thing you, you notice, uh, just looking at them from uh, all across the front, especially offensively, a very experienced group from a standpoint of age. Uh, a lot of juniors and seniors, very experienced quarterback that's played a lot of Big Ten football and uh, has been very efficient this year. So uh, from a team that, uh, you know, while this is their, uh, you know, first year with coach, uh, they are a very experienced group and have been, uh, you know, getting better each week, obviously. King, I know he's an experienced player, uh -huh. but he was new to Michigan. What, where, where has he progressed from the first game against Utah to throwing the 337 against Rutgers? Well, I think athletically, you know, he's he's someone you certainly have to be aware of athletically. We remember that from last year. Um, but uh, you've noticed him recently with uh, the way he's, you know, begun to gel with some of those receivers and, uh, you know, uh, you know it's, it's put some pretty big numbers up. So we certainly respect his arm. And I think he's also a guy that, uh, you know, you, you have to, the last couple of weeks we've had quarterbacks be able to run the ball a little bit of time, so we certainly have to respect his ability to run the ball. Simmons coming out of the game kind of led to the biggest sample size so far of Scales and Oliver together. You know, what did you see from them in that second half full time together? Uh, say again, please. What? What did you see from Scales and Oliver together? Kind of what's the biggest sample size of the two of them together? Well, I think those two have played together before, and uh, TJ's a you know a, not only a, a very good football player for us, but as a leader out there on the field, probably the most experienced guy we got, especially with the linebacker group. But uh, been very pleased. Marcus Oliver, again, this week was our player of the game defensively. And so he's a guy that uh, his versatility, and I, and I think, uh, you know, T. Gray's been you know, banged up a little bit at the beginning of the season, and, and his, his foot's getting a little bit better. So we anticipate him being close to full speed. But the two of them, have played together, and Marcus is a guy we really have a lot. You know, he's got a great understanding of the defense, whether he plays Mike or Will. You know, he's probably our most versatile inside backer. Have you gotten an answer yet on TJ Simmons as far as what specifically is his eligibility after today? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to play. I was, I was under the impression that the first half, but I, we haven't been told that yet, so. Or I haven't been told. I think our biggest, uh, you know, as we focused in the off week, uh, some of the things we focused on was, you know, one of our biggest areas was uh, third and medium. You know, third and medium was an area that we had been, hadn't been very successful in third and short. Uh, Saturday we were 50-50 uh, on third and one and two, you know, got off the field a couple times. Third and medium, we were uh, actually three out of five, but it was the three third and nine pluses that we didn't get. There were keys to, to scores, you know, not only both scores in the in the uh, second half, but uh, they converted third and nine pluses. And, uh, you know, situations, quarterback made a good play. We need to keep contain, track him down. And, uh, but, uh, you know, those are situations when we want to be able to, to, to finish off an opponent or, or, or be better or do what we want to do in the fourth quarter. Those are situations, the third and nine, third and tens, when we haven't stopped to be able to, I, I think in the second and third quarter, offensively and, offensively and defensively, we worked so well together. When we got three and outs, our offense came down and scored. Uh, the third quarter, the same thing. And then, uh, you know, if we, when we had our opportunity there in the, in the fourth quarter, you know, there were a couple of key plays there where we got to get off the field. Key penalties. I think in the game we had two key penalties that also led to drives. Now, you know, it was those that along with some third down stops. So uh, disappointing. I think we got better at, 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 in a sense on third down in some of the areas we wanted to address, third and short, third and medium. But it was those three third and nine plus that led to touchdowns that, uh, you know, inevitably got us. Some of the young guys back there, you know, obviously you want them to play more solidly as they gain more experience. But I remember, you know, at the start of the year, Andre Brown helps break up a, a two-point conversion. Jamil Cook takes a pick six back. John Crawford was flashing. You know, we haven't seen those kinds of plays in recent weeks. Is anything you can identify there? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, certainly uh, the competition, you know, the competition obviously – that we face has increased since our first four games. But, you know, there, there's plays where we're very, very close, and those are the plays along with those third down stops, along with being able to take the ball away. You know, the ball was out four or five times that we didn't get. And so any of those opportunities, whether it's a third down stop, whether it's one more takeaway, 
you know, the, the game was pretty similar from a standpoint of statistics, and you know, they ended up uh, getting a takeaway. We did not get a takeaway. You know, they ended up probably a little bit better than we were on third down, and, uh, and so when you play opponents like Iowa, Michigan, you've got to be better than them, and, and we've got to find a way to generate turnovers, uh, generate sacks. We, had, we, we were able to pressure the quarterback in a sense. I think we got five pa block passes, but we didn't get any sacks. And I think they got one sack. So there's, uh, there's some small statistics in there that, that uh, you know, we need to find ourselves on the upper half of that. And whether it's rush, be able to rush the passer better, to, to be able to help those young secondary, whether it's being able to take the ball away, whether it's our young guys or our big guys. You know, there were a lot of balls batted in the past. We've got to be able to find, be, have a way to get our hands on those. Just more to that end, these last three games, is there one thing you can diagnose with turnovers just, I think it's one in the last three after obviously a very strong start. Is there one thing or a small group of things you can diagnose to say, this is what we were doing that suddenly we're not, or, or is it something that just needs to be contagious again, I guess? Well, I, I think it's something that, uh, again, it wasn't anything in particular we were practicing or, or, or emphasizing, but we just, at this point of the season, we need to do that little bit extra, whether it's getting to the ball. You know, a lot of turnovers or, or fumbles that are, that are covered are just great effort by somebody getting to the ball. So, so it's those little things as far as getting to the ball, being able to take that extra step to be able to, 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 to bat that pass up and be able to get someone there to, 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 to be able to pick it off. So I, I think we just emphasize that, that doing that little extra, whether it's uh, you know, continuing to pass rush and, and, and whether I'm setting up the game in the pass rush, making sure that I do my little extra as far as you know, uh, I may not be the guy, you know, getting the credit for the sack or the, or the batted pass, but I got to be the one to do that little extra that gets us that, that turnover. You know, it's... What are the points of dirt and whatever that you want to see guys go ahead and sell out and try to jump around a little bit more aggressively? I know that that could be risky, but I mean, do you preach that a little bit sometimes in a crucial situation? Well, I think we just need to do our job. There are a couple times we did jump routes. Maybe we did jump routes, come out, you know, try to make that extra play by coming out of my zone a little bit, anticipating a guy instead of staying in my zone. All right? Coming underneath the block, trying to get to the quarterback instead of staying contained. So I think guys are trying to do a little bit too much extra instead of just doing their job and, and, and trusting the defense and trusting their teammates. You know, trusting the you know, D-line does not have to do something extraordinary, you know, to be able to create a sack, create the pressure, and trust the de trust the defensive backs. And that's what that's what we've really been emphasizing with our guys. Well, I think that's that's something that you know defensively we looked at what they did and it was pretty impressive that they, you know they. They do what they do, and uh, you know, are, have, have done a great job at it. You know, at, at looking at them offensively, you know, I, we certainly anticipated there at the end they were just going to go ahead and just try to like like they've done to a lot of opponents in the second half. You know, just really be physical, run the ball, run the ball. But you know, they they on the other hand opened it up quite a bit in the second half. So uh, you know, they did a good job. Are you seeing the bulk of mistakes defensively coming? I mean, are they mistakes being made? Fundamental mistakes, mistakes of aggression, mistakes of guys trying to do too much. Is there, is there a theme to some of the well, mistakes being made? I, I think some of the, some of the mistakes, uh, I, I would tend to say more of them are just trying to do too much. You know, trying to make that play and, you know, stay within the confines of the defense. You know, if you're in, I mean, coverage, you know, stay in my zone, get my drop. Okay, I don't need to chase, all right? From a rush lane, from rush integrity, do my job. You know, everybody wants to, to be that guy right now that makes that play. And we encourage them to, to be able to be aggressive and make plays, whether you're in the secondary or, or up front. So um, there's a fine line. There is a fine line between just you know, staying outside rush or out, allowing a Nick Mangieri athletically to be able to come underneath and make a play. And so that's where we've, we've got to, uh, you know, be able to guide our guys and, uh, you know, teach them that, hey, we stay within the confines. There are times when you can come out of your lane, you can come underneath and make plays, and Nick's done a good job at that this year. But, but at times we just got to, you know, ensure that, especially in those crunch times, that, that we do our job and trust our teammates.
know, I saw Dutra at the retreat on the cash look, and he comes flying up the middle very aggressively. Yeah, yeah. And it looked like Oliver wasn't able to, to fit it. What, what exactly happened? Yeah, well, it, what, what happened is it was, a, it was, a, it was a, a lead draw. So a pass fake, we had a lineman, you know, get out of his gap and rush. Uh, in, in, in a sense, guys, you know, instead of pressing their gap, you know, got out of gaps and, and he hit it backside and we had two guys out of our gap and, and it's a big play and disappointing but I, I thought our guys rallied and, and I really think that was the you know from a big play standpoint uh, you know it was about it in the day the second play of the game so you know, I, I was pretty pleased that we didn't pay get disappointed or get down about and our guys came back pretty good after that disappointing that we gave up the long drive after we after we uh, had a great punt down, and they gave him a 95-yard drive. That was disappointing, but uh, you know I felt coming out of third quarter, our guys did a pretty good job tightening up, and, and we just got to be able to finish. Yard drive was a third and six. Yeah, absolutely. Right there and make a play and stop. It doesn't quite happen. Right, third and six, and then the, the uh, two-minute drive, we had third and nine deep in our own territory, and those are those are situations where you know we've got to be able to make a play defensively. That's that's our job to be able to make a play, and that's. You know, we need, uh, you know, for this team defensively, we need to step up and make that play because our offense will respond. And they, they showed in the fourth quarter, did a great job after we held them three and out. They came back down and made it a one-score one score game.